Good evening, class. Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, pages eight and nine, the answers and the pages. Now, what I did discover is that, let me get you. Okay, there we go. What I did discover is that uh, these sheets that I gave you are actually the answer sheets, and uh, they also included my own notes. Uh, from where they're located, the answers are located. Now, when I was reviewing this for class, I discovered that these pages are not accurate. Now, I don't know if anybody went ahead and looked in the book itself, especially for the ones where I gave the answers. But what you're going to find is that um, the pages are off by about 20, 20 pages. Uh, apparently these answers were looked up um, with one of the old books, probably the last one we were using. I think it was the um, the uh, red book. It had a red cover on it. Anybody here who, who has access to a red book, do yourself a favor, get rid of it. It's off by just about 20 pages, not always 20, but in this particular chapter, it was 20. Good news is that... Uh, the section, which really is the best way to uh, look it up, is accurate. They did not change. I double-checked the sections, and uh, the sections lined up. In fact, that's how I found them. So uh, where the first one on page uh, number 64 on page 8, the uh, answer was on, I believe, page I've already marked over. I think it was page 140, but it uh, in the new book, the green book that you have, you should have, it's page 120. Okay, the section though for all of these are the same. I'm not going to mention it again, but page eight and nine, I double check them, and they're all off by just about 20 pages. I'll mention the correct page if you want to mark it over in your book. Okay, all right, so on page um, 120, uh, there's uh, the answers for number 64. And uh, the question was, where are the cleanouts located in the plumbing system? Okay, now this one is uh, not worded right. I went back and looked at this. The base of the building drain. The building drain is uh, not, a, not a stack. It's a horizontal line. It runs, you know, like left to right with a little pitch on it. And uh, I would drop that one. You could just cross that one out because the second line down, it says at the end of the branches and then it, it repeats itself at the base of a stack. Okay, so the first one you could kind of line out. All right, uh, the answer for that was on page 120. Uh, the section, like I said, is accurate. It's 1008, 2G, 1 and 2E. It's actually in a few places. But if you're on page 120, you'll see it all. Okay, also the uh, cleanouts are located at the exit to a building uh, at the foundation wall. All right, that's old news. Every sketch we've done has a cleanout going out the foundation wall. The only place where you see an exception of this are old houses, perhaps an old commercial building. But in the city, I've seen plenty of old houses where the pipe just went straight into the floor with no clean out. The cast iron just disappeared into the floor. If there is a clean out, it probably was a dandy cut in at a later date. But today we have to put a clean out before it goes into the floor. Now, you also can have a clean out outside the building. If you've ever done a, uh, a house on a slab with no basement, uh, you could put a clean out inside a cleaner in a inside a cover just before it goes out the wall but a lot of times it might be under a hardwood floor under a, some carpet and um, not a good idea uh, I would the inspectors okay I'd ask him in advance I didn't want you you don't want any trouble after the job is already done tell him you want to put it outside right up as close as you can to the foundation like in the garden outside uh, in the bushes um, I've got one myself at my house. They're, they have a clean out and it's just above grade level. So it's, it's accessible and obvious, you know, where it is. And uh, it is an acceptable clean out. And the other one here is something you run into in the mills. There's still quite a few mills in the city and, any, and a lot of them are being renovated. So you might run into this. 
if you're working on a uh, four inch pipe or smaller, you have to put a clean out every 50 feet. Okay. Or if it's over a uh, four inch pipe, which is not that common in this area, it's every hundred feet. And uh, there is a note here that you can use dandies almost anywhere in the system. Now, a dandy is good because you can go either direction. You can go to the left, you can go to the right, up or down. The problem is it's not a straight shot. It makes a 90 degree turn as soon as you go inside the pipe, regardless of the size of the pipe. Also, if you try to clear a, a pipe with a, that has a dandy and you're running your wire up, be careful because if it's blocked above and it suddenly breaks free, you could have a Three Stooges operation, all whatever was in there, whether it was hopefully it was blocked uh, something from the kitchen sink. It might be from the bathroom. It could end badly. All right, so be careful if you ever try to snake anything that's above. An uh, end clean out, different story. You got a straight shot to the blockage. However, you can only go in one direction. Okay. You can read that. There was actually quite a bit on that on page uh, 120. I think it might be 121. And uh, now the next couple of questions are a little bit repetitive, but uh, we'll go over them quickly. Number 65, how far can a four inch pipe be run without a clean out? The answer is 50 feet. 50 feet would be four inch or under. How far can a uh, pipe over four inch be run without a clean out? Uh, 100 feet. How far up must a clean out be from an obstruction? Okay, this one is a little bit, um, I won't say tricky, but you got to think about it. So let's do this. Let's come into a basement with a pipe. And we're going to have a wall with the foundation jutting out a bit like this. All right, here's the foundation wall, and the floor is going across up here somewhere, okay? Let's not get too carried away with that. And you're coming down and then you're going to do a 45 and cut across the cellar like that with your pipe. Okay. I don't think anybody here would expect that a clean out like that would be legal. And of course it isn't. You can't, you can get the clean out in place, put the cover on, tighten it up, but you can never get a snake in there. It's not going to happen. So the code says, if you have a pipe that is um, inch and a half or two inch, this clean out cannot be here. You would put a dandy like that, right? And the distance would be 12 to uh, 18, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 inches. Okay, which is pretty close. I mean, you still gotta, you gotta bend that snake in there pretty tight. And if you're gonna use um, a larger pipe, you would have to kick this out to 18 inches like this. So this dandy would have to slide over to here for if it was, uh, this would be inch and a half and two, this would be like three, and four. Okay. That's what they're talking about. I'm sure you've all probably done that. All right. This one here, three labs side by side. What's the maximum distance between their outlets? Okay. Okay, something like that. Yeah, I know they look like kitchen sinks. Uh, 30 inches is the maximum. Okay. Now, normally, um, when you do a kitchen sink, you've got a qu the uh, quick hook up continuous waste. Um, if you use the brass, it's got to be 17 gauge. Remember that the good test question, but I think all everybody now is using plastic for a kitchen sink. And the kitchen sink, of course, would look like that. Right, with these bowls being 
connected up on top. And they're usually much closer than 30 inches, probably more like 20. Okay, but for code question, it's 30. Now, where does that come into play? Well, I'll tell you. Let's say you're doing a vanity. And uh, you want to save a buck. Okay. You can do this. Now I'm showing the P trap going to the right. It could, it could go into a wall. Normally it would go straight back, but we're not, we're not dealing with that. Now, is there anything wrong with that? No, 30 inches or less. Okay. But I know I've talked to, uh, might have been, I don't know which tier, maybe tier, tier two this year. But in any case, I want all you to remember, this is not a good idea. Not a good idea at all for two reasons. One, right here, where you connect to that chrome tailpiece, that inch and a quarter tailpiece, and you got a Desenko on there, inch and a quarter by inch and a half, a uh, Desenko, PVC Desenko, uh, right here. And then you got a 90 right here, you know, like a regular a regular inch and a half 90, which is fine. And over here, you have a regular TY, also fine. There's a problem. What I discovered, this tailpiece here, want, doesn't really want to hold this, and it's, it'll slide down, okay? But even if you figure out how to get around that, and you can muscle it on there, and it, it's nice and snug, uh, that's good. But here's what happens. If this house... <clears throat> Is purchased while you're working on it. It was a spec house. In other words, the contractor built it with the hope of selling it while it was being built, after it was being built. In his case, he can't sell it soon enough. In your case, the later he sells it, the better, because the more stuff you'll have in it can't be changed. Right? And it's, it's usually material that you specify yourself that you're used to working with as opposed to something from a catalog you've never seen before that the customer picks up. So what happens here? Okay. Customer comes along, buys the house. And uh, they want to keep with the double van, you know, the two bowl vanity. A lot of people do, especially master bathroom, which you, most of you know. Um, and they might even enlarge the vanity a little bit. The one you are going to put in was a four foot, maybe a four foot six. And they, go with something a little bigger, as long as it will allow enough room for the toilet, which is usually alongside of this on one side or the other. And then they surprise you. They put uh, a vanity in that you weren't counting on with drawers in the middle. Okay? We got a problem. The drawers are going to be right where you are, right here, like this. Right? Something like that. And uh, now what? Kind of up the creek. All right. This happened to me once, and I know I told some of you guys this story. Um, it was uh, a job where I had the opportunity to do that. And I don't know why I didn't do two, two uh, outlets there, you know, two TYs, one for each side. I really don't recall. It might have been something in the wall. Who knows? In any case, um, this vanity showed up. And when I went back to uh, finish, it was like, um, what am I going to do now? This this frame, and this was a very wealthy customer, a very expensive uh, set of drawers, very rugged, nice steel frame. And uh, it was a very fortunate for me. I was able to take a piece of inch and a half with a two, with a two by four block and a hammer and bang it in in back of the frame. And I just sprung the ends out enough to get a fitting on. It was tight, and I was very, very lucky. So here's what you do. Don't do this, all right? Don't hook it up with your own homemade quick hookup continuous waste. You might not get so lucky. So come down here and do um, 
again, these are both going straight back. Okay, don't do that. But legally, you can go 30 inches um, to a drain like this here, exactly like you've been doing with all your kitchen sinks, except with kitchen sink, it's usually much closer, but you can stretch it out to 30 inches, which is usually a vanity situation. Just be careful. Okay, uh, let's move on. Two plumbing traps that are uh, acceptable, and we talked about this. Uh, this, by the way, I think you're going to find um, around page 19. And I, again, these are off by about 20 pages. Okay, the drum trap, which we went over last week on some questions, and the P-trap. P-trap, don't forget, is also called half S trap. That's its other name that you don't use. The drum trap. Uh, drum trap is probably going to be used, will be used only on remodeling. And if you're in a town where you don't know the inspector, uh, tell them what you have in mind. I've bumped into a guy who would who would not entertain the use of a, a drum trap. I had to tear the house apart to put... Uh, proper vents in. I didn't agree with him, but he was a, he's the inspector. So I would suggest if you're pulling the permit, check it out first. The illegal, but it's kind of a but situation where you might want to mention to the inspector, just like if you had a, uh, a island sink and a bow vent. Now you always tell the inspector what you got up your sleeve with that. Most guys run two inch, two inch drain, two inch vent on a bow vent, even though the book says you can run something a little smaller. Okay, plumbing traps that are not as acceptable. Now, there was another, I don't have that sheet here, but there was an earlier page that had some of this stuff on it. This one is an addition. I believe this one's kind of an addition. It's also on page um, 119, 120. Traps with mechanical seal. If you've ever been on a, a flight and used the bathroom on an a air, airline, you might have remembered there was like a flap the mechanical flap, like on a spring or something that would just like flap one way and then would come back. Okay, that's fine on an airplane. That's not part of the mass code. Uh, we don't we don't deal with that. Uh, bell traps. I think we, in fact, I remember drawing this up for you. I, something I've only seen pictures of. Full S trap, we covered that. Three quarter S trap, that would be a P trap with a Y. Can't do that. And traps with interior petition, um, any kind of a trap. They mentioned drum trap, but then they put interior petition separate. And they mentioned the interior petition rots off, and you have no trap. Uh, okay. If you see a trap, looks like. It almost looks like a, a brass bottle. Clean out cover down here, like that. Water comes in here, it goes out here. Something like that. Let's take it down a little bit. Now, the way this works, the way I'm drawing it, is that's not a trap at all. It's an offset. It goes in and out. That's nothing. Okay. Here's how it works. Right here, there's a wall that comes down at about a 45-degree angle inside the trap. You cannot see it. So the water comes in like this. It comes down and around. And as you can see, it makes a full ice trap. Uh, the, you might, you guys that do remodeling, sooner or later you might bump into these. They've been gone. They were before my time. So I would say they were used up until maybe the 60s. Um, 70s, no. But 60s, maybe. Or before, maybe 50s. There might be still some out there. If you ever see one like that, it's got a uh, nut right here. If I remember right. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. And this is like the tailpiece coming down. Right? And uh, it's usually in copper. This would be brass. This whole thing would be copper. All right, so an old house, an old remodeling job, house that 
been overdue probably for remodeling would have something like this. Or you might even find somebody who was pretty creative and use this because it was working fine and tied a new sink into it where it might be PVC coming in, right? Maybe a couple of offsets to line up with this, All right? Because this will never wear out. All right, but that's uh, an example of an interior petition. Now, what's wrong with this? Uh, it is a form of a drum trap, and it is a wider body, so it won't siphon. However, the trap part of it, if this has a pinhole in it, the sewer gas could come in from the sewer and right through here and into the house, and you would never know because the uh, petition had a pinhole in it. That's a very long shot. Like, uh, it's very rare. But some of you guys have probably seen fittings with pinholes in them. Uh, black steel, uh, malleable fittings, gas pipe fittings. Once in a while, you'll see a, a um, copper valve. Uh, the old um, valves, I remember having uh, some pinholes and gate valves once in a while. Okay, not common, but that's why it's illegal. Okay, minimum trap seal. Nice test question. Always pops up. Oops. Studio's falling apart here. All right, let's see what we got. Got a trap like this. The depth of the trap from here to here is two to four inches. Okay, two to four inches deep. They're looking for the minimum. So this question is right here, two to four inches deep. And that's on page 120. Okay, also, I'm going to mention this and you can write it down. I'm sure you've all got it. Inlet, outlet, top dip, bottom dip, rear of the trap right here. Right? Clean out? Maybe. If it's accessible, you need to clean out. If it's inaccessible, you can't get at it, no clean out. Carry a few of these. Every once in a while, Yes, you can glue the clean-out cover on if it's going to get buried, but every once in a while, that little three-quarter inch or so that this clean-out cover needs is in the way if you're trying to save space and hide this up in the ceiling, like for a, if it was a two-inch for or an inch and a half, top shower or a shower. The clean-out cover can actually be a problem because it extends down enough that it might be hitting the ceiling. Okay, that's the end of page eight. Page nine. Let's check out the time on this. Oh, time is getting away from here. All right, page nine. Let's look at this. Can you use a three a three valve diverter on a shower? Okay, this is the a three valve diverter. That's another way of saying a three handle shower valve. They were popular again before my time. I'd say back in the fifties or sixties, by the looks of them. I don't ever remember them being installed. So they were before, say, 19, early 70s. Um, the answer is no. A very simple answer. Page, um, looks like page 129, which is like 20 pages before the last time. The, I mean, the, uh, the number that I had there. So uh, what I'd like you to do is do yourself a favor. If you didn't double check any of these numbers, and if I was you, I probably wouldn't have looked it up myself. You got the answers. You got the page. You're in. Well, check it out. Notice, see if you can find it yourself and line up the pages. I found it quickly because I had this section, and the sections did not change. The book changed and the page changed. They added something by 20 pages, but not the section and the paragraphs. That is stayed the same. Uh, now, remember, if you have a bathtub with no shower head, you can use a two-handle valve, Right? And those of you who put in those big fancy tubs with the Roman spout and the big handles, that's fine. And a lot of times that comes with maybe a Simmons valve on the inside wall with a handheld shower. At least that's what we were doing before. I suspect that's still going on. But the Simmons valve has to is automatically a pressure balance valve, which makes it legal because it, now it's a shower. All right, so if you don't have a shower and head involved, it doesn't have to be a single handle but most bathtubs do have a shower head. Okay, and they mention again the uh, maximum temperature for a shower, 112. Don't forget that one. It always pops up. 
and the maximum they also mentioned the maximum temperature uh, of a house number 73 which is interesting it's it looks like part of the answer there maximum temperature in the house is 130 another big one don't forget and once you're out on your own carry a thermostat with you a good thermostat you can put under and check the temperature all right something that goes up that high minimum size shower pan all right test question really is uh, 900 square inches 30 by 30. now here's one where it does make a difference i had several you know well well off customers that could afford um what we call mud showers showers that were made by hand and sometimes i recall to take a closet what had been a closet big closet and now it's a shower right in the doorway going in it had to be altered but that would be the entrance and i'd get a shower pan to fit the one thing you got to remember though is and this is code it cannot be less than 30 inches on the side so if you've got a shower pan going into a closet and the closet like this is we'll say uh, 29 and uh, 54 right kind of a closet size not good unless you're not having it inspected okay if it's only 29 inches you're going to get a pan it's probably about a quarter inch less than that so it will fit when you put it in, you just kind of drop it and it just floats right down and that's it, right? And then you do the drain and you do your shower valve and you're out of there until the finish. Here's the problem. When this is finished, it's going to be adding uh, cement board, right? Right here. So this dimension is getting smaller. So we're losing at least a half inch with the cement board, right? And then you got to put tile on that. So there goes another quarter inch, quarter inch. So what? You're down to... Uh, 29 looks like about 27 and a half if you're lucky all right i wouldn't touch that one not with an inspector you want to run it by the inspector your choice but you're both wrong you knew better you know you're not supposed to do that and so the inspector all right putting you both both your uh licenses at risk doing stuff like that okay but the code is 30 by 30, which is also the smallest um, standard shower that you can buy, right? I think they go 30 by 30, 32 by 32, 32, 36. There's all different combinations. 30 by 30 is small, right? It's noticeably small. I've got one in, that I had to put in a place of a, uh, a closed water, a, clo a dryer. So I took the dryer out stacked it on top of the washer very clever that's actually my wife's idea and uh so now i got this the washer the dryer with a little wall between them and then i have a small shower it worked out very nicely but 30 by 30 is the smallest legal size that you can buy okay uh moving on all right they say the shower valve has been roughed in what would you do Almost sounds like somebody else roughed it in. Well, you should have been the one roughing it in. I guess maybe somebody else in your company. All right, so what do we got? They mentioned fasten it with drop in 90s. Now, most of you know what a drop in 90 is. If you don't, it looks like this. This is female thread right here. And this is the elbow going down with copper like that. And this would be the socket. You know, your pipe would be going in something like this here. Okay, now your water could be coming from above. Uh, no, actually, I'll take that back. It's got to be coming from the shower valve is right here, right? So this is this. Here's your cold, your hot. And if it's a tub shower, then you'd have this going down to the tub valve with the diverter here. All right, but this is the drop in 90. It's got little wings like this on the side, little ears, like little mouse ears. And that's where you fasten it to the stud. They're kind of in the back of this, right? So that uh, you can fasten it securely. Get some uh, sheetrock screws, inch and a quarter sheetrock screws, a two by four. Don't use ferrin. Ferrin's too skimpy right here. And you put that block in between the studs like that. Spike it in, right? Put your uh, drop in 90. 
never have a problem with it. Because remember, when you put that in, you, everything is finished. All you've got is just this showing. And you have to take the um, shower arm and spin it in. Right? You're talking that thing into place. If you've got just something skimpy like Ferran, not, not a good idea. All right, so use a 2 by 4 for that. Okay. Um, What's a deluge shower? Now, this one, you can look this one up. Uh, I've got here section 1014, page number I'm sure is wrong. I I did not check this one out again. A deluge shower would be like if you've been in, oh, you guys, I'm sure, had a science lab in high school. And um, they didn't have one. I was in school, but I imagine most of you remember they had a ring shower with a big, one of those big sunflower type shower heads. So if anybody was like splashed with acid or whatever, in theory is supposed to just go over and pull that chain and the water would flush that stuff off. Well, that's a deluge shower, right? And um, they, they call it a bell-shaped shower head. I think it looks like a big sunflower. In any case, um, yeah, they spell it out it's pretty much the same way I just did. Okay, and in a, in a school, it would be like a chemistry lab. And a business, it would be a business that handled corrosive waste. Which of the following best describes an indirect waste receptor? Which uh, best describes an indirect waste receptor should be? It, it is a sink trapped and vented with a cold water supply and a basket in it. Okay, I got here page 140. Um, and you can check that one out. Minimum size of a water service. Okay, this one here. I would highlight this. It's on page, uh, I'll tell you that. I know I said I wasn't going to mention all the pages, but it's on page 149. 21 pages different than the old book, the red book. And um, it's three-quarter inch. Now, that's all. the only thing the code says about um, water supply. The water supply is determined by the city or town, the material. Right, like Dartmouth, and I think it still is. I believe some of you guys mentioned that it's still one inch copper, soft copper. Very ex expensive pipe. You go to another town, they might be using some kind of plastic. So it varies from town to town. And if you're handling the water service, you go into a town like Dartmouth, be careful because you might be basing it on your experience in some other place. So be careful on that. It's technically not part of the plumbing. Right, and the city and town actually handle that. So everything up to the meter, right, is by the city or town. Now, if it's got well water, we don't have that. Right, the plumbing really starts um, right at the expansion tank in the cellar. Right, if I was an inspector, I'd be looking that uh, all that was connected properly and uh, treat it kind of like a meter. Okay, um, return line. This we covered. Again, I'm not sure if we did both classes, but I'm going to do this in about one minute. Let's do a water heater. And you got a customer with a big house. Now, I've seen ranch houses up to 100 feet long. So if you got a water heater in the corner of a house like that, and you get bathrooms at the other end of the house on the first floor, um, you're easily going to be 100 feet. So it would look like this. Here's your water heater. Cold water in. You guys can't see color, I guess, right? Well, anyway. And this would be going to a bathroom. That little lollipop thing is like a tub, sink. And it would have like the blue lines also going over there, which I'm going to leave off this one. Now, if this is 100 feet plus, a problem okay well actually there's two problems one you're violating the code and the code uh, wants you to add a recirculating line so I'm going to try another color again I wish you could see it but when you get as close as you can to that bathroom and you run over here like this and uh, and this is a circulator and then it comes down and it ties in to the drain 
Okay. In other words, you unscrew the drain, the uh, boiler drain, add a T and put the boiler drain back in and then get a special circulator, corrosion resistant, either bronze or um, stainless steel. And what it does is circulate the water around all the time, or it could be on a timer. So instead of standing around and waiting a minute for hot water to get to that point over 100 feet away, this water is always going around in circles. Now you get fancy, you could insulate all this pipe so it's not wasting energy. Um, although I don't think you have, you don't have to according to the code. But the idea is to get this green pipe here, the recirculating line, as close as you can to this bathroom. The closer you get, the faster the hot water comes up. All right, you don't want this, don't be lazy and put it back here because it's easy to get to. Get it close, right? Yeah, back here you'll be less than 100 feet, but they're still going to be waiting around for the water. And they're going to be wondering, you know, what was the big deal with this when there's no hot water or the hot water takes a while to get to. So always carry this as close as you can to this bathroom. Okay, the vacuum breaker on a flush type valve, that would be... Um, Oh, a urinal valve, a uh, bidet is located below the valve. All right, so you got the valve and the vacuum breaker is located below that. So uh, you, you guys can look that one up. All right, so that is going to be it on uh, page eight and page nine. Got any questions? Uh, when we're live, you can ask me about it. But like I said, uh, that's a very good example of an old book being different than a new one, not just the color of the book. Okay, I'll see you guys uh, on the next video.